Hello, my name is Dr. George Machaki, and welcome to week 12, Introduction to Business Online. And we're going to be covering today, we're going to be covering accounting. Uh, last week, we did our exam three. I ended up majority of students, well, on average, the, the, the students who did it, since I'm looking, because they had until Sunday to complete it, uh, I was running ahead of about four uh, A's, a couple of B's. I had a couple of D's. And maybe uh, a couple of C's. So we're doing uh, pretty good on that. All right. And so we did the personal uh, uh, financial accounting. We did pretty good on the forms. I was, you know, with the exam. So I was a little bit uh, easier uh, on uh, the grading. Gave you a little bit more of a benefit of the doubt than your discussion board. Okay. So what do we have today? Today we're going to be doing, remember, we're in week 12. So you, we only have like about three more weeks. You're going to be uh, uh, completing your final paper. So part of your paper is going to be doing an income statement. So this week, here's what we're going to do. We're going to be looking at accounting. Now, in accounting, there's three basic statements that you should be aware of. Statements that, you know, there's more statements, but the three main ones is your income statement. tells you how much revenue, sales, and your expenses. Your uh, uh, balance sheet tells you uh, how much you owe, how much assets you have, what's your liquidity, what's your expenses. And then your uh, cash flow, basically how much money you have to pay your bills or your short-term uh, uh, obligations, okay? So those three are what really uh, the main financial statements that most businesses are really focusing in on. How much revenue is coming in, just like you in your personal life. How much is my wages? How much am I getting paid this week? What are my expenses? Could I pay off my debt? And how much cash do I have on hand to pay off my debt or with emergencies? Okay, so what you'll be doing this week, you're going to be doing your income statement. Out of all the three statements, I'm just going to ask you to do one. And the way you will approach your income statement, let's go into this week, okay? Last week you did pretty good, the exam, we were off from the break, now we're back in, let's get, you know. So you have two parts of the income statement. you got your learning, your learn smarts that you'll do, and I think you have the Sunday or Saturday, you know, complete that one. Look at the learn smart last week, uh, Many didn't do the personal finance for some reason. It didn't pop up. When I say pop up, it didn't automatically turn on. So what I did, I extended it. You'll see it as 11 and 12. And I think you have it till this Friday to complete uh, uh, the personal finance. Do that. You get it done. It's uh, 15 points. You know, most of you are doing pretty good at the overall grade. Some are, you know, on the cuff there. You want to get as many points as you can going the last four weeks. You'll do well in this class. Come on. You've been with me already for... 12 weeks, this is our 12th week, come on, only a few more weeks, you can do it. I have faith in you, all right? So here's your income statement. You're gonna have one thing, you're gonna submit an income statement that you, I want you to think about it, and then you're also gonna be doing an income statement and talking about current events on uh, uh, anything uh, with uh, uh, accounting within this uh, uh, discussion board. Something similar to what I do in the classroom. I bring in current events, what's going on in the classroom, and then that's what you'll do. You'll look on, you know, you'll type in Google or look at something I want current. I want one in the last couple of weeks. What's the Trump administration doing that's going to change the accounting practices? What's the Trump administration, that's the administration, you like it or not, that's who uh, we have to deal with. They're the administration right now that's in, uh, in, in, uh, in power. So what are their uh, views on the accounting procedure? Are they going to lessen up some of the rules? Is it going to be beneficial to small businesses or is it going to be beneficial to large customers? Is there going to increase the risk on that? What's going to happen with the Affordable Care Act? Will I still be penalized as a business if I don't uh, offer that to my uh, uh, employees because I'm a small business and it's an expense I can't afford? Or uh, will my rates go up? Will the penalty? See, all that is what I'm, I want with the current events in this uh, 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 a uh, form that we'll be doing a discussion board. But in the meantime, you're going to be doing your homework. So when you're going to go on an income statement, you're going to do an income statement. So let me show, walk you through the income statement. Now this you're going to submit to me either as an Excel, those of you familiar, or some of you, you could type it in as a Word document and submit it. It's going to be part of your final paper when you look down in here, where it says major paper requirements or something on, on an income statement. You have to let me know. Just one month. So, right, so you're going to submit it in here like you do the other uh, statements. I'm not going to do it. But first of all, what's involved in the income statement? Now, here's a PDF file. You're going to click on this, and this is what's going to do. You can print this out and use this as a graph, uh, a rough thing, so you can do with pencils to play around with the numbers. 
you're going to do two things. You're going to put your company. Now, the income statement is how I would approach this statement. Remember, you're doing what we call uh, uh, an income uh, uh, pro uh, forma. It means you're basically trying to anticipate what your income is going to be in the, in the future. You don't have a clue yet, but you're going to say, here's how many customers I'm anticipating is going to come in. Here's the price range. Here's what I think my uh, expenses are because you've already done the research. It means just like when you'd be moving out, the uh, following what we did on our personal finances, when I'd be moving out, I'd say, okay, here's how much money I'm making. I make maybe uh, 4000 a month or whatever, me and my uh, spouse or my significant other or my partner, who wh whatever arrangements I have. We're moving out, so we have between us maybe uh, uh, $4,000 a month, 5000 How much is it going to be for rent? I'm going to split that. How much is going to be for my uh, 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 living arrangements, how much can be for electricity, how much for my own personal phone, or do I need a phone, do I need any kind of insurance, and all that you're going to have to look at is basically your income statement for your personal every day. You know you need to at least have so much income to break even. When we talk about the break even point in business, it means after I pay all my expenses, I could, you know, anything I do above is just a variable cost. So in this thing, so it's for a month, but the best way to approach it is to approach it for one day. So how many sales? Look at your product. If I'm selling cupcakes, if I'm selling, um, I forgot what some of the other ones are in here. If I'm selling, I'm, I'm thinking some of the, you know, my other, my full-time classes also, because after a while, all the products start together. If I'm selling vegan uh, hamburgers, if I'm selling, uh, 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 taking pictures, whatever. Come up with an average cost. Let's look at a, if I'm going to McDonald's. If I go to McDonald's, McDonald's knows that some people are going to buy the Big Mac, some are going to buy different things, just fries, some a drink. But an average customer going to McDonald's would spend maybe $8. TJ Friday, an average customer may spend uh, $10. But remember, I mean, some are going to spend more and over. Just an average. How many customers a day? So you're going to say how many. And remember, look at this, how many. Look at that as product lines within your product mix. We talked about that in Chapter, um, I think, 13 in Marketing. Product lines make up a product mix. I have a product line for if I'm in uh, uh, McDonald's. I got a product line for my breakfast. I got a product line for my lunch. And maybe a product line for snacks or desserts. So, uh, you know, you know you, you'd have more. But in here, just give me two of your main product lines. Figure how many customers are come in and what's the average cost that a customer spend when they come in. Knowing some will spend more, some will spend less, but an average customer. And then you're going to come up in here. And this other income is like a lot of businesses. When you look at other income, you may have the restaurant on the bottom, uh, on the first floor, but above you have apartment. So even though it's underneath the restaurant or the business's name, or the owner's name, that apartment is other income that you uh, actually put in here and you show it as other income and you write it off because you got the insurance on it for your restaurant, but for the, the, for the uh, whole building and the owner you're renting out, you're maximizing or from economics to use of your resources and you get a, a higher return on that investment for the whole building. The bottom for your operation, the top for renting out or, or whatever usage, okay? Now, when you're looking at the cost of inventory, if you're not selling anything, I mean, you know, uh, services are a little different because services, you're, you're looking at your expenses more of your uh, inventory. You may have some inventory. If I'm doing a, a massage, I may have to have some oil or something else. But for the hot dog place, look at the inventory, and I'm trying to do it back from your personal uh, uh, last chapter and your personal income. Look at the way I look at it, I, I use it as an example for students on inventory is I'm moving out and I have a pantry, okay? And in that pantry, I fill the pantry up with $500 worth of goods. My beginning inventory is $500. I figure I got the flour, the sugar, whatever I need in the pantry, okay? You know, don't forget, don't worry about the, the refrigerator, just a pantry. Right now, I just want you to think about it. So look at that as your supply for the hot uh, for the hamburger place. I'm doing McDonald's. They know they have to have so many hamburgers and everything else. So they have that in their pantry. This is how much food I have for the month. And I want to say this is going to last me for the whole month, anticipating how many customers I have here. And remember, this is my inventory, what I pay for my inventory to uh, basically uh, uh, sell at this price to the customer. This is my cost. So now I've I got this month. 
and about halfway in a month, I ran out of maybe flour. Not everything on the inventory, but maybe and then I ran out of uh, sugar or ran out of some other items. So I have to purchase more inventory to maintain my safety stock within my inventory because I'm anticipating so many customers coming in, so I always have enough inventory to satisfy the needs of my customers coming in. Okay, so I have that. So then I add the two up from my beginning inventory. What I had to if you didn't have to purchase anything else, that's fine because you're just gonna just, that amount's gonna be the same. You're not adding anything else, but eventually you had to replenish that inventory, and at that cost of that inventory may be more than what the cost that you had before. That's when we get into the LIFO, FIFO part of the accounting. Read that. Is what cost? You know, I bought the flower now at $2. That's a good price. That's my cost. But then in the middle of the month when I had to replenish it because the price of flour went up to $2.25, my cost cost me more for the same quantity but more for that. So my uh, uh, cost of goods available for sale is, uh, goes up. Okay, this is my cost. All right, and this is what the customers uh, are paying me, an average cost. Okay, so I have that, and then at the end of the month, I subtract what I have left. Right, less inventory. Boom, put it in here, and this is my my cost of goods for inventory. Here's how much I made, my profit. Here's how much my expenses for my inventory, and that gives me a gross margin. It doesn't mean just means just with my inventory, with my goods, my product. This is basically how much money I've got left over. Okay, so I've done pretty good. I got so much coming in, and here's my inventory. Here's what I have left. This is my gross margin. Doesn't mean it's any profit. It means okay, I I've done my task. I done what I got the money coming in. I I paid it. I did whatever. Now I come in. I'm looking at my selling expenses. What's my selling expenses? Remember, I had in here uh, on this one. Uh, I didn't have in this one, but if you look in your book. You'll have an example, and they will walk in. What are your selling expenses? What are my sales costs? What's my advertising? You know what I mean? Let's sum your general expenses, your office expenses, your electricity, your rent. Okay, so now this is all your expenses. You know, make sure you put your um, uh, your labor costs in there. You, you know what I mean? So you have all your expenses, and then you're going to subtract this from your gross margin. This is after I sold the product, and this is going to be before taxes, my net income, what I have left. Hopefully, I got something left. And I got to pay the taxes on this amount. And then after I pay the taxes, this is my profit. If I've lost money because I have to pay tax, I got to pay more tax than bringing in, it tells me one or two things. The first couple of years, you may not be uh, uh, making money. You can't raise your rates because of your competitors, even though you, unless you got a higher value or some, uh, value that the customer perceives, he or she's better hamburger meats, but whatever. So you can't raise your rates because of your competition. If you do, that means your customer is expecting more. So if you raise your rates, you're going to have more costs coming in here in your supply, depending on your inventory. Or do you look at a way of reducing the cost of your inventory? Or do you look at a way of reducing expenses? If you can't reduce your expenses and you can't reduce raise your rates any higher, then you have to somehow come up with an idea to bring in more customers. Or you raise the prices of your product, but you do through an advertising campaign that we did in Chapter 13, trying to get that customer had the perception that she's getting or he's getting a better hamburger. What's the difference between a McDonald's and a Burger King? Burger King says it's grilled, it's fresh. You know, uh, Wendy's, what's their whole advertising? Our meat is not frozen, it's fresh. We get it, we form it, we give it to you just like home. McDonald's now is going, hey, we can't, we, we're, we've been advertising, trying to go to a market with the healthy conscience. People ain't coming in there. Don't waste your money. They're not coming to McDonald's to eat healthy conscience. They're going back to their basic route, the nostalgia, the Big Mac. How do I make it fresher, taste better like it used to be from the old days? But now they're willing to pay a little bit more. Uh, okay, so you do this. Now you're going to do it for one day. And this is for a month, so knock this out and put down 2017, all right? And then you put this in here, and this is what you're going to submit it. And then you, down the road, when you're doing it for a year, remember, winter months, some months when it's cold or raining, you're, uh, you're going to see your, um, your income statement when you're projecting the future. 
it would be nice to have it all even, but life it isn't like that. When it's taxes time, people may not eat out as much. When it's winter time, it's cold, it's real cold outside, people don't go out as much. Summertime, they go out more, they may eat more fast food. Certain holidays, they eat more fast food. So you're going to see your cycle is going to go out like that. You're making a projection to see that your income coming in and your expenses, you could mirror. If you know on your low months that you're going to have low months because sales coming in, but your expenses you can't change except, you know, maybe not as much a, a, a labor cost, but you have just somebody coming in there. So what do you do? On the high months, you save some of that money in your retained earnings as part of your operating expenses for the future. So you know in the slow month, I've got the money to pay for it. Hopefully, or I may have an ad or a campaign to get more customers coming in at a lower price, but more customers, so I'll make a, a, a payoff of my break-even point. Shoo! So this you'll submit in is going to be part of your paper. It's not that hard. And look, if you come in with a negative, that's okay. Because in the first couple of years, most businesses may not come in in a positive. You can't raise the prices. So that means when you open up your business and you're going out for your uh, line of credit or additional money coming in next chapter, you're going to find out how do I get capital to run my business. I already got money to open it up and have the idea of coming starting out. But now how do I sustain my business for the next two, three, four years? Knowing that the first year I may break even or may be underneath my break even point. So I have to have some money until I get more customers, no matter how hard, to get my product in there so they could buy, you know, not raising my price if I get more customers buying my product. So the, the more I buy, they buy, once they, they pay for the rent, all that additional cash after I pay my expenses, my rent, and break even just a variable cost that I do in my, uh, what do you call it, the uh, cost of uh, inventory coming in. Not too bad. Well, look, remember, you're learning. Accounting, you know, if you bought an existing business, you've got those numbers, you could start massaging it. The chief, when you go into the next uh, week, we're going to do the finance and what you're doing now is thinking of an accounting. I don't have those numbers, but I've been in a business. i got to make some assumptions. That's finance. Looking at how to make those assumptions going forward. How do I make a budget? Because, look, if at the end of the month you say you're going to have 20, let's say you have to say 100 customers coming in buying you know, a, 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 a ten dollar hamburgers. You got a thousand bucks a a week or a month, whatever. You know, you mean whatever your number is coming in. Do it by a day and do it by you know. Then multiply it by thirty days or twenty days. How many days are going to be open? You know, so many hours. And then so you're going to have so many customers coming in by that many days. If for some reason the week is slow, what does that mean? I need at least this amount of customers coming in to break even. So that means I got to either sell more next week or do something to uh, 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 reduce my expenses so I'll have that cash flow in there. Just like we did on our personal finance, how much money do you have in reserve? In business, we call that retain earning. You have some money in reserve in case something happens, customers, you know, because that's my income coming in. I may have uh, accounts receivable, customers paying me, that's the other income coming in. So if I have that, but if because of a recession, they may not be paying, you know, I expect 100% coming in. In reality, I always plan for 80% of my accounts receivable to pay me, but if something's going on in the economy, taxes, I may some months only get 60 or 40%. All right, so this isn't too bad. You do well. You write it up, type it up, and, you know, once you submit it, save a copy so you can put it into your uh, 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 major paper, and it's all done for you, okay? Let's go back into our weekly homework assignment. Okay, so now you've got your income statement. And then here, you basically submit it in there. So you're in week 12, it's open up. And I'll be finishing here. You have your forms. Remember the forms. I'm doing it a little bit more open. So you don't have to worry about this form that you're going to be the first post. Once you post, you'll see everyone's out. Because now I'm looking at current events. If I wrote something about here's the new law, the, the Sachse law that uh, 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 the, uh, the Trump administration is wants to overturn, relax some of the uh, accounting rules, post that in the subject area so somebody else goes, oh, he already posted that or she already posted that. I have to find something different. And then you add on. So as a group, this is a nice group. I think there's 12 of us in this group. Everyone finds a different current event from, from uh, 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 pertaining to accounting 
and we post it and we'll discuss it and then we talk a little bit if you have some problems with your income statement here's how many customers i think are going to buy my sandwiches here's how many customers are going to buy my product here's how many customers are going to use my services and put that up there and the rest of the class i want you to like you're doing very well you're talking back to me you don't need me anymore you're a network of people working together. You're working as individual consultants, but working in the umbrella of an investing company. And you're talking, hey, I've got this customer. How am I going to work this? I've got this one. How could you help me? Could you look at this idea? Do you think that's working? You're sharing ideas in a virtual office like we're talking here, looking at your accounting, coming up with ideas, coming up with other people that work in that field saying, you know, you may say so many people in that restaurant. I've worked in that restaurant. I think your numbers are too low. I think your average cost is too high. It should be higher. It should be lower. I think you're going to get more customers coming in. I think we should advertise over here. If you're going to bring low cu more customers in, then you have to buy one, get one free. And then you're looking at, you may not get the profit margin you're looking for. You reduce it, but you got more customers. So in the long run, you do, you you made more money. Okay? Ooh, that was pretty good. You've got your connect homework. You've got this to, to go back in the forums. And remember, don't wait on me in the forums. You're doing well. And uh, last week uh, 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 for your uh, Learn Smart on chapter um, week 11, it's I uh, made it back alive. It's alive to the end of the uh, Friday. So that's uh, chapter 21 or, or, or appendix D. Depends on which books you got. You know, sometimes you get the hard copy to Pen XD. You got the e-books. It may show it as a, a chapter 24. All right. So we should be okay. So that's it. Uh, you're doing well. Only have four more weeks. And we have a final exam. We do a nice review. Uh, most of you are doing pretty good. If I look at the overall grade, you want to at least get a C out of this class. Most of you will, will way uh, above that. You'll get your A's and uh, your B's in here. So my name is Dr. George Machaki, and again, thank you for signing up at the College of Lake County. This is an uh, introduction to uh, business, small or large, gives you a good foundational understanding of how businesses work. Today, we're, we, we're covering uh, uh, accounting. Remember, look into my uh, YouTube. On there, I got a full one-hour chapter going into detail accounting, utilizing the book, and going through the examples. And I'll see you within our discussion board. Bye.